all been around and doing it But now it's my time to shine and start proving it I'm losing it, I'm moving it The city is where I'm made Bostonian flow, I kick it in back there Yeah, I got game, got in a fan way We the city of the champs, every sport we play Spit wetter than the harbor, yeah, I'm flowing like the Charles I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike miles Yeah, it's Google signing on, John to the Hancock And I'm always key, I'm ready to unlock I be doing big things What's going on, guys, and welcome back to another edition of Once a Week. I'm Billy Jan Lutis, and guys, you've seen our guest before. He is inspiring students. He's inspiring people truly across the country. We were just talking before we recorded. He's traveling more and more, and every single time he's hopped on, we connect on so many different levels, whether it is mental health, whether it is a way to help students and help schools and the staff in general. But today, I wanted to make sure we had our guest, Jack Cernet, back because a few weeks back, I posted a video on what's the story you tell yourself? What's the stress that you're living your life by? And the beauty of that is at the same exact moment in time, Jack posted a video with a similar message. And him and I have been the same wavelength for months now. So when we get together and do these videos, guys, there's so much power behind it. So I'm grateful that you're here watching this, you're here listening to this. But I got to give it to you, Jack. Thank you so much for back. Thank you so much for being back, brother. And I got to add into it. You got the blonde hair now. Have you been called the real Slim Shady yet? Because you didn't have that last time a couple months back. No, no, no. Yeah, I look, I look more like a bird now, that's for sure. Like a little flamboyant peacock. <laughs> Was that what you were going for? <laughs> no, you know, I uh, obviously, Billy, I think you you would agree with this. The goal is as speakers or coaches or just humans, I'm try I always try not to be a hypocrite. Mm. And so if I'm telling audiences or clients, on a regular basis, hey, let's strive to become a better version of ourselves. I ought to do the same. And I had, so before the Super Bowl back in the beginning of February, okay. I was in the hospital and I had a couple reflection points and I always try to reflect back, okay, like where am I falling short? What can I do better? And I realized there's some things I've always wanted to do, but I never did it because I cared too much what people thought. Yeah. And as, as juvenile as it sounds, ever since I was a boy, I wanted to dye my hair blonde. But I never right. did because I was too paranoid and insecure about what people mm -hmm. thought. And I just thought to myself, that's such a weak stance. Like, that's just silly. It's just so silly. So to, to not do something or to not pursue something, um, you know, as long as it's legal, because you're too worried what people think. And so right. um, another reason I, I dyed the hair is I was wearing hats a lot. And okay. I felt a little more comfortable with a hat on. And I knew it was becoming too much of a crutch. Okay. And I said... I said to myself, I know I'm going to wear a hat less. If I pay money to dye my hair, I'll be more inclined to not wear a hat. So here we, here we are, you know, we're getting there. Wow. It's, it's a little crazy. I got a little, it's been different shades of blonde throughout the last couple months, but okay. um, it's fun. Life is short, you know, um, tattoos are kind of the same thing. I forever wanted yeah. to get tattoos, but I waited because I was just too concerned about what people thought, which is obviously a, a dangerous way to live your life. Um, yeah. As long as you're right. being yourself, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, so I yeah, no, I, you know, I'm not sure how you would look with blonde hair really, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know if that'd be a good look for me. With, you, with blonde hair and the beard, you'd have to probably go both. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, I I I know I'm, my eyebrows are not touchable. I'm not going to touch those, but yeah, the hair for now is going to stay. And why not? You know, it's fun. Yeah, for sure. It actually was, you know, I, I had a speech on Friday. We were just talking about this, you know, before we recorded here and, uh, Having that be an example, like, hey, I've always wanted to do this. I'm going to do it because it's me. It's what I want to yeah. do. And right. I'm not going to let other people's opinions dictate my actions. And that yeah. obviously help when students hear that, that helps them a lot, in, you know, in a way. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, there's the hair story for you. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I think back when uh, in high school and like, you know, I think I'm a year older than you, but in high school, when Eminem was taking off, dude, everyone's dying their hair blonde. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like, yeah. Wait, yeah. <laughs> For you to say you always wanted to do it back then, before we dive into an actual topic, what was it that sparked you? Like, you know what? I want blonde hair at some point. What was you know, it? I grew up, yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, I had frosted tips for like a okay. month, but yeah. that that was like a half attempt. So it wasn't the full thing. Yeah. I'm a huge soccer guy. I grew up, that was my, I grew up playing everything. And nice. of course, when you grow up playing soccer, you watch a lot of European soccer. And a lot of right. those European soccer players still to this day, very, uh, Yep. flamboyant with their hairdos and their, you know what I mean? And so I always yeah. thought, Oh my gosh, if they're doing it, I need to do that too. That's cool. Um, and when I was a kid, my hair used to get blonde in the summer, you know, until I hit puberty. And so yeah. I always liked in the summertime, my hair would get really blonde. And then obviously it stopped happening eventually. So yeah, that was it. That was the inspiration was seeing my favorite athletes on TV. And I'm like, Oh, I gotta do that. So 
Yeah, it's, okay. definitely, a power, awesome. it's definitely a power move. You know, you got to just own it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, seriously. That's what you're doing, man. But in all honesty, that lines up with the message we want to give to people today with Correct. what's the story you're telling yourself? And, and are you is the story you're telling yourself serving you and helping you move forward? Or are you living by an old definition that doesn't fit you anymore? And so, Jack, you even touched on that with going over just the hair example where in the past, as we all have at one point or another, every listener, myself, Jack, we live by standards that other people set for us. We live by a story that other people have of our life. And then eventually when we're growing, we're becoming older, teenager, adult, whatever it is, you get to a point where it, it's not helping you anymore. This story, it's creating more stress than support to help you move forward towards your goal. So Jack, even just your hair example, you stepped down and said, you know what? I'm doing this for me now. I'm going to live more in courage rather than stress of what other people might think of me. So when we posted those videos a couple weeks back and people can go onto our Instagrams, can go onto our Facebooks and see these messages. Um, you know, I think both of us are in our cars at the time because it was a moment of inspiration. We both just yeah. hit it. That's why it's even better to think we were on the same wavelength to give this message now to people. But Jack, when I say that to you with what's the story you're telling yourself, how do you see that play in your clients' lives and your audience's yeah. lives? Because it's it, every single person in the world is living by a story that might serve them. They might be adjusting that story to help them more so to achieve their goals. Or that story they're telling themselves is actually the limiting factor and the walls that they keep hitting themselves. Yeah. So how do you see that pop up with what you're doing? Yeah, well, first of all, hand to God, I promise I didn't see your stuff. It's <laughs> literally coincidental. Yeah. Um, and mine was a little bit shorter than yours. My, my statement we've talked about already, but is there is nothing wrong with you other than the story you tell yourself hmm. of yourself. And, right. you know, I, I tell clients a lot, and I, I notice this with adults, teenagers, uh, middle-aged, elderly people, audience of all different ages. Yep. I think first, it's interesting when I get there, just mindset on, you know, when we're born, and I think you can obviously back this up, we've got, I, technically, they've said we have two fears, right? The fear of falling and the fear of loud mm -hmm. noises. Yep. No one is born immediately thinking they're not good enough or whatever negative story they have. It's through, like right. you said, an experience, an adult, another person, trauma. Right. And what tends to happen, one of the really common ones, we'll just go with it, is I'm not good enough. Mm. That happens a lot. Like my speech on Friday, I asked the audience, like, hey, who has ever thought that or currently thinks that? Every hand went up, of course. Right. And, you know, what I've noticed is if you don't catch it when you're young, like a high schooler or college student or even younger, yeah. that will ruminate as an adult. And mm. what's interesting, I know you can speak to this, Billy, is when you tell yourself you're not good enough, subconsciously and consciously, your brain's going to look for reasons why you're not good enough. And, you know, I talk about the reticular activating system, the RAS a lot in the brain with, with students, with audiences, with clients. And it's like our filtration system. It decides what we focus on and what we take from that. And it's amazing. You know, I can speak from just my own example. I had a lot of different negative stories. I was telling myself forever and just out of habit and um, unconscious behavior, I kept finding reasons why those things were true as opposed mm -hmm. to looking for the things that I wanted to become or that were like positive about myself, you yes. know? And of course, yeah. as you know, um, this isn't, you know, rocket science to the listeners. You fuel yourself with enough examples of why you're not good enough. Eventually that just becomes like a dogma and a fact in your brain. And all of a sudden it leads to this behavior, this action, this habit, this addiction. And, I, and it's tough to break it. You yes. know what I mean? I, for me, I'm not sure about you, Billy, in your own life, but I know with myself and with a lot of the audiences I talk to, They've been thinking some of these thoughts and saying these stories about themselves for so long mm. that they almost feel like safe in it. You know what I mean? Mm. It's almost right. more comfortable to just to be yeah. like that. Right. You know, it's like if you step outside by a dumpster, eventually it will stop smelling because you get used to it. I get that, that. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like with these stories. And so the goal with this talk today, in my opinion, and yeah. when we talk to audiences or clients is to open up their awareness to that. And what's yeah. amazing is a lot of people don't even realize Yep. They've been saying this consistent negative story about themselves and they've been doing this to themselves um, for, for years potentially. Yeah. So right. that was a lot of word vomit. I no, think that kind of answered perfect. your question, but that's, that's awesome. what I've noticed was it was kind of a learned, not kind of, it was a learned behavior and thought pattern. Yep. And everyone has a little bit different version of it, but right. I know that one of the more common ones is I'm not good enough or I'm not enough. Right. And if you say that enough, you're going to look for reasons why that's true. And all of a sudden, that's just the rat race you find yourself in.
Exactly. No, that's perfect. And, you know, I love all the key points you said with RAS, the reticular activating system. And for people right now listening, if you're not aware of how your brain operates. So one thing Jack and I always talk about with students, whoever it is, is yes, the mind, but the brain is the organ and your brain is yep. trying to help you essentially survive. Like that's literally what it's trying to do, but in how it takes in all the information. Like I love bringing to audiences uh, across the country for that matter. Just the one little fact. If I ask listeners right now, how many thoughts do you think you think a day? A lot of, well, you know, if you got an hour down, oh no, maybe a thousand thoughts. And I get those answers from people like, you have 80 to well over a hundred thousand thoughts a day. And because our brain is literally a supercomputer, it's processing all that information in at one second. So if I'm looking at the screen right now, yes, I see Jack. Yes, I see the blonde hair. On my screen, I see me. I see information from the studio that we're in right now. I don't acknowledge that. I acknowledge Jack, but my eyes are taking in the rest of the information and my brain is trying to compartmentalize everything. So with what we focus on, as Jack was just touching on, you start to, uh, what's the age old saying? Uh, where your focus goes, your energy flows. So if my focus becomes negativity, I'm not good enough. And I'm looking into the world from the lens of I'm not good enough. My belief system that's focusing that right now, I then start to see or attract in all of these different reasons to tell me I'm not good enough based on that belief system in your unconscious brain that you told yourself all these years that says you're not good enough. So that's why with this concept of storytelling today, you got to understand if the story's not what you want it to be, or if your story might be, I was never good enough, I'll never be good enough. The beauty of that is that you're the one that changes it. At any moment, you can go, you can write it down, you can do an actual activity to try and do this, but to take a moment for yourself and, and think on that, like, all right, one, where did that belief come from? Where did that story start? But does it still serve me? And can I change it? And I think in this day and age, we're all sitting there waiting for someone to give us permission for life to be different. Someone yes. to give permission for life to change. And the beauty of that is the only person that can give you permission, the only person that can help you change your life is you because you are the one waiting for your own permission to say, hey, I'm ready to move into the next stage of my life. And, and I've heard that concept in my own right, but I've heard it from teachers. I've heard it from pastors in their own form. I've heard it where we're all trying to get people to understand this one piece of the puzzle is the story you tell yourself you created to help you in the world. So the new story that you tell yourself you can create and you can essentially erase the old one. You can let it go. It doesn't have to be the foundational point to how you build your life. It can be something else. It can be whatever you want it to be. And when that belief becomes the backdrop, that story becomes the backdrop, and you look out into the world and you start focusing on all these reasons to why you are good enough, to why you're the best, to why you deserve what you deserve in this life, to why you are becoming who you're meant to become. If you look out through that lens, life, the universe, God is going to try to bring in all these reasons to show you exactly you are that good. Exactly. You deserve this. Exactly. It was your birthright. You deserve to have this in your life and become this great version. But we need to do the self work to really realize it's on me and I can give myself permission. I don't have to wait for a parent. I don't have to wait for a teacher. I don't have to wait for a pastor. I don't have to wait for a friend to say, hey, you know, you can live life differently. You tell yourself I can live life differently and you start to live life differently because your brain, your RAS is Jack touched on, even the neuroplasticity, if we really want to get yep. to the brain aspect, you know, you're compounding all this information down. It becomes the habits and routines you follow, neuroplasticity. You can adjust that and start to change that concept with neuroplasticity, with RAS. And then your brain's now becoming a great tool to help you live life at a higher level. But the beauty is that is you're directing it. So, Jack, again, you say word vomit, I say word vomit, but I'll pass it back. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important. That was amazing. I obviously second everything you said. I think two things I'll, I'd love to kind of pinpoint. Yeah. Uh, the first is, like, figuring out, like, how this all started. And, mm. you know, this can be a little bit of an ego crusher or make some people uncomfortable. But it, at the end of the day, no one got inside of my brain as a little boy or your brain as an adult, young boy, teenager – it yep. made you think these thoughts. It was like yep. our interpretation of life or someone said, said that to us and we believed it to be true. Mm. And then we found evidence for it to be true. Right. But no one forced you to tell yourself like, hey, I'm not good enough or 
I'm, I'm never going to succeed or whatever the, the negative story, um, the, uh, the, the story you might be telling yourself be. So I think just getting clarity on that, like I said, like we're not born with these thoughts and these stories and these uh, beliefs and ways of thinking and repetitive thoughts. It's kind of a, lear- it's not kind of, it is a learned behavior. And so I think just even establishing that can get some self-awareness for people and make them realize, okay, like this was sort of my own doing. Right. And because I, I put myself in this position, I can also get myself out of it. And then right. the second point, like you said, is all sometimes it takes is giving yourself or giving the audience or giving the client permission to change. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I'm big on when, when I'm talking with audiences or with clients, I, I'm big on making them realize in the beginning, not making them, encouraging them to realize like there's a part of you that believes this is true. And I like to think of it as like their inner critic, that nasty inner voice that whispers them sweet nothings. But there's also a part of them I know at times in their life that doesn't believe it's true and they, they think the opposite. Right. Um, and so just kind of setting the foundation like that can help yep. people start to uh, get a little clarity. And then, yep. you know, ironically, like avoid beating themselves up for thinking this way, yep. which is uh, which is obviously kind of like just a, a incessant circle if they continue to do that. So the stimulus or the start or the catalyst of this story you're telling yourself why yep. that's there helping people realize that yep. and then giving them permission and letting them understand like hey you can absolutely get out of it and obviously i think you and i just our own personal examples or testimonials right there yep. um but yes that is and it it is uncomfortable yep and it's not going to be perfect like anything else in life it's never going to be like this there are still you know yet on friday when i spoke at chillicothe in chillicothe missouri Yep. Those high school students were surprised. Like I still have days where I need to like the, where I'm struggling. They're like, Oh my God, you seem like you have it all put together. I'm like, yeah. no, no, no. There's still days where that negative story comes in or I'll have a little moment that will kind of create a flashback and I got to fight that off and face myself right? and counteract it. You know what I mean? And so yes. that's uh, anyways, I think it's important. Like you said, permission and then realizing like you can change it. You know what I mean? Right. You got yourself in the position, you can get yourself out. And sometimes that, I don't know how to word it, Billy, but I think it's easier if we just point the finger and be a victim. Mm. And, and like, uh, I know for me, when someone told me, Hey, you know, you're the one who started thinking this and finding evidence for it. And you put yourself in this deep, dark hole. Mm. I was, I was like almost offended. I'm like, how dare you say that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get that. Um, Right. But I had to first accept that to realize then I could also change it. I could get myself out of it. And and that's, that can be hard. That can be That's a fragile right. conversation, depending on For who sure. you're talking to. Yeah, it's I, I love all that because it, it leads to so many deeper areas of thought, but it leads to deeper conversations. And for people listening, I'd say it leads to a spiritual area just as much. Because yeah. 100% to what Jack's touching on is, in a way, you learn. These are all learned behaviors. These are all learned thought patterns. These are all learned emotions. It's not to say that you're pointing the finger at like, oh, I... Uh, I was raised this way. My parents are to blame to why I think this way. Like, no, that's not the case at all. It's yes. You might've been born into environments. You might've experienced pain and trauma and love and joy and whatever you went through to help you become this version of who you are now, which is great. But to then unravel that, let go of what doesn't serve you and then move into what does serve you. It gets to a place where you realize that you were born into the family that you have. You're born into the household and the environment for a reason. And you might have learned all of these behaviors. You might have learned this perspective of yourself because, I don't know, maybe a parent or a sibling or, or I don't know, someone, friends told you you weren't good enough. You'll never be good enough. And when that becomes the backdrop of your mind, you, you get to a point in life where either you continue living that path and you get the results that come from not being good enough or you sit there and you take time for yourself, grab your journal, go outside, sit down, have a moment to you, maybe in the car, whatever it is. And you realize, like, all right, where does this stem from? You know, I had a, all right, well, I had a very, very tough upbringing. Do I still live like that? Or is life, has life changed for me? Yeah. These deeper concepts, these deeper questions. And why I, I say we chose this, and like Jack, I give you 110% back in you because it's a concept where if someone tells you, no, you chose this when you came to this world, if people are spiritual and they believe that that connects and everything like there, all things work together. That's so tough for people to grasp because like, no, I didn't choose to go through these traumas. I didn't choose to go through these struggles. But when you take a step back and you look at it, I'm like, all right, if I did, you just ask, if I did, what's the lesson I was trying to learn by doing that? 
And when we sit there and we face these traumas now, we try to unravel them and try to heal from them. What you're really doing is you're questioning one, where did it stem from? If I learn the lesson to why I went into that situation, even as a little kid where you were just going about the world, but you're deeper, spirit shows that experience. When you look at that concept, why did I experience it? What did I learn from it? And in that moment, you teach yourself, but you learn the lesson. And when you learn the lesson, you pass the test, you move up a level. When you move up a level, you look at it where if I went through all that to bring me here, I don't need it anymore. I can take the strength from that, throw whatever pain is out, and now I'm stronger because I learned the lesson to why I went through all those traumas and experiences. And Jack and I have talked on that before in past videos you guys go check out on YouTube where we can – even Jack. I'm going to use Jack's story because Jack's been – through a significant amount of experience with tra trauma and pain just in the hospital aspects. He's grown through that, and he looks at every single time he's been to the hospital, he, he, even on struggling moments, he looks for, all right, why now? What's the deep why? Like, why, yeah. like I'm so good. What, why am I back in the hospital now? And, you know, it, people want to hear more on Jack's story. We've, like, had videos directly on that. But we can look at that through the lens of pain, which you're going through it, or – that there's a deeper meaning behind it. And when you learn the deeper meaning behind it, as Jack does every single time, it helps him level up that much quicker to the point where he learns more about himself. He learns more about his, his goals, but his way in this world. So when we look at our stories that we tell ourselves, as I tie this all together with everything I just said, when we look at the story and the beliefs that we stand on, they're there for a reason. And then it also emphasizes more so to pick the pen back up as the cliche and the old saying is and start writing again or you can go grab that eraser and start erasing some of this story. All right, I went through this to learn this. I learned it. I'm going to flip the page. I'm going to start writing on this one. But there's a deeper concept here that people, I hope people listening can wrap your mind around. I know I'm going deep into it. If you look at it through the lens of like, all right, why did I choose to, why did my spirit, why did my soul choose to go through this experience? And then you learn it. And then it doesn't yep. hurt you anymore. You grow through it. And then you sit there and you're a whole different person because you realize if that's true, my spirit chose this. There was a reason for it. But now I can actively choose where I want to go. And that's taking the unconscious beliefs, making them conscious, and then writing your own aspect, coming back to RAS, neuroplasticity, and making out your habits and patterns. Jack, I know I just said a lot. Yeah. Does that connect? Because you're saying yes a couple times. Does that connect that spiritual concept there? A hundred percent. All that does. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to repeat what you said, but I agree with all of that. And mm -hmm. I wanted to add on, you know, I, hearing this, I can totally connect the dots. And I had been able to even as a young teenager. Um, mm. But for me and what some people might get more value from instead of listening to just you and I speak some of these facts, I think for me, what really changed it was seeing and hearing other examples of other humans going from here to here. And so I remember yeah. when I was 23, I was in the mm -hmm. hospital for 303 days. Mm -hmm. um, that was my biggest, craziest time in the hospital. I, I had, I think, eight surgeries that year, tubes everywhere. Wow. I mean, it was just a mess. And I remember the, uh, the chaplain of the hospital came in. This was when I was in the ICU after one of the surgeries. And he asked me, he said, do you think there's people who have it worse than you? Mm -hmm. And of course, yes. But it's sometimes it's inconvenient to think about that. You just woe is me. And he said, do you think they all are just had these negative stories about themselves and they're depressed and stressed? Or do you think some of them are like positive, peaceful? They use their trauma and their adversity as their greatest asset. Mm. And I started thinking, OK, that's interesting. Wow. And over the years, over the last six plus years, I've met people who have been raped, dog attacks, mm. lost limbs. They've had both parents pass away before 20. Wow. All these crazy. Some people have had worse experiences than me. Some people have less work, less intense. But not all of them are just like dying in the story they're telling themselves. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I so, you know, and I think sometimes hearing like examples of people going from, for example, I have a client, you know, who, who was sexually abused multiple times growing up. Yeah. And of course, you can imagine the story she was telling herself was rather nasty, mm. and not feeding her and not uh, fulfilling her and not helping her out in life. She, if you talk to her, she's the polar opposite now as an adult. Yeah. And it's just unbelievable. Wow. How did she get there? Right. How did she go from here to here? 
And it wasn't um, just magical. She just wake up one day and start having these better thoughts about herself and stories. And so I think sometimes just hearing that can help a lot of people. I know for me, I'm a big like visual learner and seeing other people do it. You know what I mean? And hearing other examples that to me helped so much because I can totally resonate with everything I've said today, obviously, and everything you've said. But sometimes just seeing examples of other human beings going from uh, their worst critic and worst enemy and saying all these nasty stories about themselves, right? Our brain has that negative default bias. Yep. And then turning that around to a 180 transition through neuroplasticity, through training their RAS, through daily actions and habits, right? Repetition is the mother of all skill. Yeah. That helped me a ton over the last six and a half years was finding out and hearing and talking to and reading about other examples of people overcoming mm-hmm. their own negative stories. For sure. And that was huge. That was huge. You know, especially people who had it worse than me, yep. that, which they do. That was, uh, that to me was like my, I get that allowed me to give myself permission to yep. change. I'm like, okay, well, if these people who have it worse than me yep. can totally change the story they're telling themselves and become a happy, peaceful, fulfilling human being. There's no reason why I can't, you know what I mean? For sure. no, and that no, right there, that doesn't, that's not as, that's not super spiritual or like, you know, specific, but just hearing other examples, that's helped me yeah. more than, than anything. And a lot of times with the speaking gigs, that's sometimes all it takes is we yeah. talked about this before we started recording. Yep. A lot of people don't really, can't really resonate with their story or they might not care unless they can see themselves in your story. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of people have experienced negative stories and, you know, the story they've been telling themselves has not been serving them. Right. I think we've all been there. You and I have talked about this with each other. Yeah. And then hearing about other examples of people doing the, you know, achieving the opposite, that is like worth its weight in gold right there. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. No, I, I love yeah. it. And everything you said, man, I, I love it because it's a straightforward way. And I give you, I, one, if your client's listening, I give her so much credit because that's- I know. Unbelievable. Phenomenal. Like, oh my goodness, I love that so much that she's healed from that. Well, what's uh, crazy too, Billy, is like, I, <laughs> I've i had a lot of crazy stuff happen the last six years, but it hasn't crushed me in like the first 23 years of my life. I had less mm-hmm. intense traumas and adversity pre-23 and that totally ruined me so how did that happen right you know what i mean how did i start changing the story it's exactly what you and i've been talking about today it wasn't just like a magic pill i took you know exactly right it's time it's effort it's it's taking step backs and looking at things in a different light but to your point we need to see examples of it in books and even movies for that matter as much as some could be fabricated there it's still a realistic concept that helps us understand ourselves more. That's why I always come back to Rocky being one of the greatest, the whole entire Rocky series being the greatest series of movies. Yeah, yeah. But when you sit there and think about it, this is a fictional character that is teaching us how to overcome our struggles. And I, when I, I can remember going through hell and, and then literally I could, it, I think there was a sign from God in the universe. It's like, cause every single time I was going through hell, uh, Rocky marathons were constantly on. <laughs> it's like, that's why I get so connected to it. But to, to watch this fictional character, it's a story you're connected to for a reason. But when we dive into books or we listen to speakers and we hear their stories, it allows us a deeper perspective on who we are. Yes. If one person can go through it and get by, I can go through it and get by. If one person can heal, I can heal. And I'm going to connect as much as you said, it's, it's not the most spiritual point. It actually really is because, you know, if I die, I love to study the spiritual aspect and everything. Everyone's looking at the world through their own lens. They're Correct. trying to find their way in the world. But if we want to even connect this to scripture and whatnot, back in the day, you know, Jesus coming to earth and everything, this universe and helping everyone. He did that so people could see what he did, grow their faith, and his whole goal was to show everyone that it's in themselves to be able to do what he did. He always puts it on them. Do you have faith enough to believe? Do you have faith enough to believe? So he's helping them change their own story to what they believed of this world and of this earth. So if you take that, and you know, people listening might be spiritual or religious, whatever it is. Take that back from the religious perspective or spiritual perspective or biblical perspective and just sit there and be like, all right, if I do have the strength to change and I've watched individuals in my lifetime change their life, could I do it too? Did I watch them because it was meant to inspire me, Jack Stern inspires, it was meant to inspire me to really grow through my own story, to change yeah. my story and how I live, to change my life and how I live, to become empowered? Or become limited. And if you look at all that information that Jack and I just touched on, 
everything in your entire life is helping you start to see life through a greater lens. And when we look at ourselves through that greater lens, we're already changing our story because that's a pivotal moment. That's a pivotal, yeah. that's like that best part of the movie. That's that best part of the book where the hero, individual listening right now, changes where they get their strength back, where they find out, all right, I'm meant for more. And we that's that's what invigorates people. That's whether it is Rocky, it could be Spider-Man, it could be Star Wars, whatever the heck the, the movie or show is, they all have this concept of the hero being broken and then getting to a point where they realize something about it and they grow. So if people listening right now can take a moment for yourself and have a realization point, if, every, if everything in your life was pointing to this one moment now to take this message in, does it change you? Will you change yourself with it? Will I grow with it? Will I throw it to the wayside? Those are the questions that we run through our mind at any moment where, do, like if Jack and I come to speak, you know, it's funny, a couple of weeks back, I was in New Jersey speaking and I posted, wow, is that, is that, <laughs> is that a sign from God right there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen that. For people listening right now or watching right now, there are fireworks and everything when I said that. But the beauty of that is I don't know why. <laughs> I have zero clue what I we say or do that causes effects in this screen. Um, Jack and I were talking prior to recording, and I did a thumbs up, and a thumbs up popped up on the screen somewhere. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> so I, was, I don't know what I just said, but fireworks started popping up everywhere. But I was in New Jersey and whatnot talking, and to connect to Jack's point, um, like we said with his clients, then we kind of, you know, start to round this whole thing out. Uh, I spoke on mindset, mental health, personal development to a staff wellness fair and all these teachers, all these principals, all these people there it was phenomenal. And there was, I'm cleaning up, we finished the gig, everything went well. And there's a woman in the crowd and you know, she's listening, shout out to her because she's grown in such a great way. Um, she came up to me and started asking me deep questions to the point where this conversation was not just a five minute conversation. This turned out to be an hour and a half conversation and, and to the point where they were closing the school down because we had to leave. And the whole thing was her getting to a point in her life, very powerful, where she knows her life is supposed to be different. She's been through a lot of struggles. She's been through a lot of pain. She knows in this area of her life and this experience, there's a lot of things that she doesn't like in her life. There's a lot, like whether it's how family treats her, how friends treat her, whatever it is, her days, she's always exhausted. Like she doesn't get to do what she wants to do. She doesn't get to treat herself. And so I asked her, like, is that the story you live by? That nothing's ever good enough or, or your life isn't good enough? Like, what if you live by a story that you, you could actively start changing it by doing more for yourself? You're saying you don't have time. In 24 hours in a day, you have time to yourself at one point or another. It's just, we believe we don't, so we don't see it. Yeah. And I said to her, like, what's the story you tell yourself? And she, she went on, okay, is that the truth or is there a deeper story behind that? And she sat there and she got really tight in her throat and she, she gets, got teary-eyed. And she gets, and she said to me with tears in her eyes to the point where she couldn't even speak. And she's, she's trying to get like, I, I can't say it. Well, you can't say what? I can't say my truth. I can't say what my story should be. I know what it is. I feel it in my heart. I've wrote it out so many times, but I can't speak it. And, you know, that's a personal talk that we went into the how she could help her do that. But it's just to add to Jack's points where you are at a point in your life where there's a new story ready to be written. There's a new truth that you're uncovering about yourself to help you into the next stage of your life. And at some point, with however long it takes you, you got to look at it through that lens and choose. Do you want to embrace it or do you want to keep living your life to what the old story was that got you the results you have now, good or bad. And then if you want greater, you change it. You start to move forward into that yep. by changing the story. But, you know, I, I love it that Jack and I get to travel and speak and you know, soon enough we'll be on the stage together helping, whether it's schools or people, whatever it is. But we get to experience these moments with people. You know, we're both coaches as well, but we get to have these individual moments where, yes, a message we speak to people could impact them, but those messages we speak only come from our own experiences that we looked at and said, that's not going to stop me. There's a lesson in that I want to learn about it, whether it's us talking about the mind and mental health, whether it's talking about confidence and leadership, whatever it is, Jack and I have been through those hurdles and we've overcome those hurdles and we came out better. Because our story is not defined by what we grew up in. Our story is defined by what we choose. And what we both choose, I'm going to speak for Jack right now because I know it lines up, is that there's a lesson in what I'm going through and it's helping me get to where I want to be. Even if it's slow at times, even if it's great at times, everything's leading me to the goals and the dreams I've set forth before myself. So if that's the case and everything's working in my favor, 
Even if Jack's in the hospital, it's adding to his story. Even if we have a great gig or a bad gig, whatever it is, it's helping us get to that greater goal. So with people listening, what's your story? Does it still serve you? Could it be better? Do you want it to be better? Do you want it to look different? All great questions to ask yourself, but take time with. But Jack, I'll pass it back off to you before we close yeah. this whole thing out. Yeah, I, uh, you know, we, I think I feel like we've talked about a lot of amazing things and tons of different kind of talking points all under the umbrella of uh, what's your story and knowing you can change your story. And I, two speaking gigs ago, yep. sort of a similar uh, conversation, um, and I had a student ask, I heard everything you said, and but I don't even know where to start. And so mm-hmm. I just wanted to really quickly, sim- this isn't for everyone. Yep. This might not work for everyone, but I know the best thing that I've ever done when I started trying to change the story in my own head was just simplify it. Mm-hmm. And look, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I'm an amazing Christian and I have been for my life. There's That's definitely not true. Uh, mm-hmm. However, I knew that this particular young lady, she had asked a couple of spiritual religious questions earlier in the Q&A. And I, yep. I told her one of my favorite verses is Psalm 23. In the very first line, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And so every morning she said she'd wake up and she wouldn't be able to look at herself in the mirror because she didn't think, she thought she was ugly. She didn't look at the other girls. She was in the overarching, hey, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy, all this type of stuff. So I just said, hey, every morning you're going to look yourself in the eyes, six feet away from the mirror. Because when you get really close, you start seeing all these little imperfections and your brain starts. So six feet away and you're going to tell yourself to your face, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Just wow. start there. It's that simple. And that's going to be on repeat. Every time you feel like you have a negative story or a negative thought in your head, because you know those thoughts throughout the day, mm. you're going to follow it up with the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And if you're not religious, maybe just something as simple as I lack nothing. Yeah, right. Yep. And slowly but surely, I told her, eventually you're going to start to find evidence of ways that you, you lack nothing. Mm. You know what I mean? There, there's That's actually a fact. And so that was, uh, I thought, interesting because, it, yeah. you know, we've talked about a lot, obviously, and I think it can get overwhelming. Like, okay, I heard you guys. I understand it. But, like, part of my French, where the fuck do I even start? Yeah. Like, what am I – how do I even start to do this? It's true. And so it's true. that is one. And the second one, just to reiterate your point before we wrap it up, yep. you know the whole Roger Bannister, first guy to run yeah, the four-minute mile? Sure. Right. That's Broke a great example. Yeah. My, yep. The chaplain at the hospital kind of used that with me. He says, you know, before Roger Bannister ran the four-minute mile, no one thought it was possible. One. Exactly. The second he did it, within what, a month, you know, multiple guys did it. Now thousands of teenagers have done it. It's because people went to the starting line believing they could do it. Yeah. And so when I saw examples of other people change the story in their own life and improve their own mental health and relationship with themselves, yep. I believed it was possible. Right. And before I ever had other examples of other people, I, I just always assumed, hey, this is how it's always going to be. Mm. This negative default, I'm ugly, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm always going to be a failure. Right. That was the assumption my brain, I was making until yeah. I saw the evidence. No, that doesn't have to be true. So those are the last two things I wanted to touch on. And obviously your example, my, my own personal story as well is a great example. But yeah, I, I would al- always recommend for people to uh, keep it simple to start. Yep. You know, it can be very easy to try to do 30 things at once. True. And, uh, and then, yeah, just that, that example again. Just know it is possible. And obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. But it, it, it is a uh, compounding interest, right? Consistency compounds. So yeah, yeah, awesome. brother. Uh, that's a great point to end on right there. So, uh, you know, to close this whole thing out, guys. I know Jack and I we touched on so many great points, building you to this concept of your own story. But then, as Jack just said, it, don't look at it as this massive thing. Like, yes, it's a story that your life is built on. But when you start to change it, it's literally as simple as you grabbing the pen and the piece of paper and then just writing, what do I want my story to be? What do I want that foundational belief to be in my life? The Lord is my shepherd, as Jack just touched on, I lack nothing. If that becomes that girl, the example he gave, the backdrop for her day, that's a foundational belief she then lives by of I lack nothing. And again, yep. if you take the, if you take the, uh, the spiritual and, and faithful side out of that, I, I lack nothing. If you even just live by that belief, yes. as we touched on to connect these points together, the reticular activating system, neuroplasticity, and you're looking out through the rest of the world and I lack nothing, you start to feel abundant. You start to feel abundance coursing through you where I look out into the world or I look into, heck, the bank account or whatever it is for someone listening around, the fridge and making sure you have food for yourself or your family. 
you start to realize, all right, I have enough. I All my needs are met. And if you start to live from that concept of I lack nothing, all my needs are met, I am abundant. These affirmations, when you start to look at the world through that, that becomes the story you're telling yourself. And then you start to see the results pop up in your life. That's the beauty of spirituality and connecting it to your mindset and your mental health because it's all intertwined. You know, that's the beauty Absolutely. of it. mind, body, and spirit are all intertwined together. And you start to see that the more your story unfolds, because the end goal of your story is to realize how powerful you actually are to shift your life. That's why yes. we understand that. So guys, take these concepts and heck, I, w- I would love for this talk to go another 10 hours, but you know, we got stuff to do. Yeah. I know it's a meeting coming up, but that idea, guys, look at your story. If any part in this message, something stuck out to you and you want to reach out to us, I'm going to about to ask him in a second where to find them, but his, all of his information is going to be in the credits of this video. It's going to be in the description. But guys, reach out with questions. If your story or something about this sparked you and you want to ask us, that's what we're here for. We literally are coaches. We help people do this on a daily basis. As much as we speak on stages, we have the individual moments with people that are incredible. So reach out if you have a question to either of us, and we want to help you with that because this is a deep concept. Your story that you live on is literally something that dictates the rest of your life and how your life has got to this point. So let's step into it. And if you are someone that says, all right, you know, I feel like there's more to me, but I don't know where to start. That's what Jack was just touching on. Let's yeah. talk about it and help you start. That's the beauty yeah. of it. But yeah. Jack, and I, tell them where I can find you, you know? Yes. Yes. Really quick. One quick yeah. follow up to that. Cool. There are going to be days where you will not believe the Lord is my shepherd. I like nothing. The new story you're going to begin to write and look for evidence of in your life. There's going to be plenty of days yeah. where it you do not believe it at all. Those are the most important days to still find evidence and take action. You know, it's really hard just to think yourself to a better life. Mm-hmm. You also have to take action and do these things. Like, what would someone who lacks nothing behave like? So mm-hmm. that was, you know, I told this girl, I said, I said, please do not get discouraged if after the third day, you don't believe it at all and you feel weird even saying it to yourself. Mm-hmm. That's the most important day to say it. And then yeah. eventually it'll start kicking in and all of a sudden it will become believable and then it will just become a fact. And you yeah. just know it's a fact. So just sorry to go no, on, but I just want to reiterate awesome. that because of course that's it awesome. just takes time. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's um, awesome. Instagram, Jack yep. Cernet. Or no, I changed it because I got my old account back. There you go. <laughs> I am Jack Cernet. So I am Jack Cernet. Cool. Uh, website is jackcernetinspires.com. Uh, Facebook, my name. Uh, I give out my email, a, a particular one, not the one I use for everything else occasionally as well for students to reach out to me and, and if I need to contact a staff member. So um, a good email to reach out if someone wants to reach out or obviously, you know, Billy's the man as well is contact at jackcernet.com. Nice. Um, and yeah, I, I, I know for a fact you and I are living proof that it's possible to go from this story to that story to improve the life between the years. And um, this is cool. I could go on forever. So All I right. appreciate your time, Billy. Yeah, no, I appreciate you being here, man. I, I love when we get together because there's so much power behind these messages. Yes, sir. Means, yeah, right. And guys, as I said earlier in the video, go check out all of our other videos with Jack. Jack, I think we've done like three at this point. This is our fourth one, I think. I think our fourth one now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, guys, there's a lot on YouTube for you to go check out and see it. If you know Jack goes deeper into his story about those hospital experiences, he goes deeper into. Uh, some key messages he brings to stages. So if you want to learn more about Jack guys, we have those videos, go check out his website, check out his Instagram, reach out to him. But you know, I would ask you for a lasting message, Jack, but you just put a perfect period to the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. He just said, so I don't think there's anything else. I, have yeah, to ask. I, think, I think we can just reiterate what we said in our videos, right? There yeah. is nothing wrong with you yep. except for the story you tell yourself about yourself. Yeah, that is it. And you, like you said, Billy, the coolest part is you can change it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Give yourself permission to change your life. You're only waiting for yourself to realize that. So on that, guys, we're going to close this whole thing out. Reach out to Jack if you have questions. But I thank you so much for listening to this new episode once a week. Please like this message and hit that thumbs up button below. Thumbs up didn't pop up on the screen this time. <laughs> <You> know, <right? laughs> like this message, guys. If at any point in what we were talking about, someone popped in your mind that you feel needs to hear this message, share it to them. Hit that share button, send them the link, send them the message, whatever it is. Not to share Jack or myself, but to help that person. That's the only reason why we do what we do is to help other people. Share this video to them, share this message to them. Whether it's, you know, maybe it is the reticular activating system. And, oh my goodness, they talk about this. They need to hear this. Or it's someone that you're realizing they might be living their life by a different story that they're, and there's more to them. Inspire them with this message. Help someone else. Reach out a hand. 
And if you have not already, please subscribe to Once a Week. Hit that button below. Because, guys, that number is going up, and it's so great to see. It's great to feel that. But that means we're reaching and helping more people. That's the goal of why we do this. Once a week to help people move forward into who they're meant to be. So I thank you for that. And then, again, all Jack's links are in this credits, and they're going to be in the YouTube description. If you're in need of a coach, you can reach out to Jack. You can reach out to me. Go to BillyGLifeCoaching.com. You set up a free call with me, and we'll be right there for you. Or if you want to hire Jack or myself to come speak to your group or come speak to your audience or your school or whatever it might be, maybe it's a business that we want to help your employees, guys, reach out. Let's talk about that. We're, we just want to help people with what we do, and we hope this message today helped you. So, again, Jack, I thank you so much for being here, brother. It's been a blast. Absolutely, Billy. This has been good, dude. Till next time. Exactly, right? <laughs> Have a good one, guys. I've been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving it. I'm losing it, I'm moving it. The city is where I'm made, Bostonian flow, I kick it a back day. Yeah, I got game, got in a fan way. We the city of the champs, every sport we play. Spit wetter than the harbor, yeah, I'm flowing like the Charles. I be speeding on the speed, call it turnpike miles. Yeah, it's Google signing on, John to the Hancock.